Welcome back to Patman Garage. So today we've got a 2012 F-150 5 liter that we're going to put some spark plugs into as general maintenance at 103,000 miles on, on this unit. And we're not going to waste any time. We're going to jump right into working on the truck. So the coil pack screws are 8 millimeters. So we'll get these pulled out, just set them up here on top of the wiper cowl, get them out of the way, make sure they don't fall down somewhere. Now, <clears throat> most people will tell you that you need to unplug the connectors and they are very fragile, uh, especially as these trucks continue to age. This is 10 year old plastic and or however old your truck is and uh, over time they'll, they will break. So my personal preference is wiggling the coil loose and if you pull this harness up here like that off of the, the valve cover it gives you enough slack you should be able to get this coil out and then just set it off to the side do your spark plug and then that way you don't have to mess with the connectors all right so i got all four of those coils removed and I've got all four of these coils removed. They're just hanging. Like I said, I don't like stressing those connectors more than I need to for R and I. Plus, it's just one less thing to have to actually take off. Um, so the spark plugs are the SP548X. Um, the lower number is the original number. The X is the new number. So I got new spark plugs from Ford. And actually, one of them is the old box, old design but they're they're the same plugs they just superseded to itself um so no big deal there but just fyi if you run across one that don't panic um so we'll get the uh, spark plugs removed from the engine they are uh just a standard 5 8 spark plug now they are deep well so i have a extra long spark plug socket you don't have to use a deep well but the if you use a standard socket and then an extension, you risk having your socket stay on the spark plug inside the head. And it's not like end of the world because you can always just remove the spark plug back out, but it can end up being a little bit more of a headache. Um, so with the deep well spark plug, I'm going to fish it in here. So even with that long of a socket, like I'm just right there at the top of the head. So I'm still going to use an extension uh, for my my uh, impact driver but um, if I if the socket were to get stuck on the spark plug I, I can easily grab it right there with some pliers so we'll get so we'll get these spark plugs removed and I will put them on my box I'll show you what I'm looking at for those and then we'll get the new ones installed That's not what I was going to show you. That's not my intention. <laughs> All right, so with the spark plug removed, um, what I like to do is assemble them into a, a uh, cardboard box like that. We'll put all four, all four, and then we can compare the spark plugs and do a health check on the engine. Now the uh, the shape of the firewall on this back one, I can't get my impact gun in there. So we'll just do this one by hand. <clears throat> Not a big deal, but when we can, we like to speed up the process a little bit and use power tools. Number four is removed. We're gonna add it to the box and then we'll get onto the driver's side. 
Now that we have all eight spark plugs removed, we're going to get in here nice and close and we're going to look at the uh, porcelain. If we can focus. So, there we go. So, we're looking for uh, any kind of discoloration. So, these are all pretty normal looking kind of off-white. Um, nothing that's super obvious so if this truck was ingesting coolant um, whatever color the coolant is gold pink whatever um, if you are green even if you're ingesting coolant then it'll show up a little bit of tracing on the uh, on the inside sleeve of the porcelain here um, or if you're burning a ton of oil then they may look a little more brown um, and you know we can also look at the threaded portion of the spark plugs we don't look like we're in um, bad shape there the porcelain part out here um, nothing looks um, soaked in oil or anything like that so just doing a quick health check doesn't look like we got valve cover leaking um, internally into the spark plugs doesn't look like we're ingesting coolant and doesn't look like we have one cylinder that's running way leaner or way richer than anything else so I think we're ready to go ahead and install the new spark plugs back in it. Alright, oh, I got my uh, driver's side bank all done and torqued down. I'm going to show you the torque on this side. Um, the torque spec is 11 foot-pounds, which is kind of light. It's not a whole lot of torque. Um, I just kind of wanted you to see what it looks like. This is set to 15 at the moment, but um, I'm just... Just barely going to pull down on this, and that's it. I mean, it, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, I'm going to show you also what it looks like by hand if you are trying to do this at home without a fancy torque wrench. What that looks like. And this is a good opportunity to show you what happens when the spark plug gets kind of stuck down on the socket. Um, so I kind of just wiggle the, put the extension on and wiggle it and help work it loose. So if you're doing this by hand, what you're going to look for or feel for really is we're just going to, let me crack that back some. So you're going to just run down. And then when it when you start feeling like it's actually mating down on the the last of the threads and it's engaging you're just going to do like that much more i mean just basically a little more than snug is all you need to do it doesn't have to be crazy tight this one in the same way That's it. Um, we could even do one step further and we could flip our ratchet to reverse. And see what kind of torque we have coming off with it. So I was, it's showing 15 foot pounds right at when it was breaking loose there we go i broke loose at 14 so my calibrated arm torque wrench was basically exactly what we were looking for on the uh the installation torque um obviously i'm experienced doing this um but I'm just kind of going to show that you don't have to have the fancy fans tools to be able to do this job um and that one did not move at all so, there you have it. We'll put the uh, coils back in it, and then we'll see how she runs. All right, so as I was pulling them out, uh, you may have noticed that the coil kind of bends a little bit. Um, so this part's a fixed, uh, rigid part of the coil, but the outside end of the boot is a little bit flexible. Um, so what you need to do is kind of gently pull up on the harness, just to make sure you're not pulling too hard on the wires on the connector itself. And then you want to just kind of bend the end of it down with one finger and just help get it started. And then it'll go right in.
do that one more time. We're gonna just kind of bend the end of it like that. Just kind of bend the end of it and then it'll fall in place. There you go. And uh, hopefully this is the last video of before we get it to run, but uh, t tightening the coil bolts, you just need a little bit of wrist pressure on them. They don't have to be super, super tight. They're going into a, a metal boss inside of a plastic valve cover. So you don't need to get crazy gorilla tight on them because A, it's a small screw and B, it's going into plastic essentially. So you just want to make sure they're tight. That's all like just, just a little lean on your wrist and then you're good to go. Um, and then last but not least, we need to get those harness retainers pop, pop back in here. So you can see in here, what I actually removed was this guy out of this rectangle hole. So we just need to make sure that guy gets lined back in there. Another one here. And then third one. And then we'll do the same thing on the driver's side. Get the harness re reattached. So see here again, little fir tree clip. And uh, from a mechanical standpoint, if the if you break, if you were to like completely break this fir tree clip, it's not going to keep it from running. But if you completely destroy one of these connectors, then the connector is going to keep popping off going down the road and you're going to have all kinds of weird uh, misfire and drivability concerns. Um, so that's just another reason why I don't want to disturb these if I don't have to. It's much easier to pop the harness off than it is to pop each one of those coils loose. So I think start to finish, I think that was probably, oh, geez, I don't know, maybe maybe 30 minute job i mean it, they're they're super easy on this truck but we're gonna get this thing started up and see how she runs now So it may take a little bit to, uh, I mean, I say a little bit, like maybe 30 seconds for the truck to relearn the new spark plugs and refine its idle and all that. But uh, it should be pretty quick on figuring out um, what's going on with it. And so if you, you know, run the truck for like 30 minutes and it still runs like crap, then maybe you got other issues with it. But this was just a general maintenance. Um, we weren't chasing a misfire or anything like that, but um, doing the spark plugs on time for maintenance means that we're going to get the most life out of those ignition coils instead of stressing them out. So the, the longer that spark plug gap is, the harder that ignition coil has to work to create enough power to jump the gap and create a spark. Um, so doing them on, on time is an important thing to do. So pretty quick, pretty easy, quick video and uh, quick job. We like quick, easy stuff, simple. And, uh, we're going to see what's going on with the front end of this truck, and that'll be another video. So thank you guys uh, again for checking out my stuff, watching my videos. It helps me out, and uh, I will catch you on the next one.